Hello, hello, hello. I'm Lee Halliday, and this is what we're building today. This map here, you may be thinking, ah, oh, it's just Google Maps. No, it's something we're going to build. It's in React, and it's bringing remote data from an API, and then we're clustering that data, and then we're going to allow you to click into the markers, and it will zoom you in to the next level when it breaks those clusters apart. So those are the four things we're building today. The data, it's coming from the UK Police Department. They've got an API where you can get all the crimes for a date and all the crimes have latitude and longitude, which is perfect because that's what's needed to plot them on a map. So to get started, I've got a Create React app that has a few packages installed already. I'll just cover those quickly. We've got SWR, that's for um, fetching remote data using hooks. It's a package from the folks at Zeit, uh, the people behind Next.js and the, the Zeit Now serverless platform. We've got Google Map React. If you've watched my other Google Maps video, this is a different package I'm trying out. It seems a little bit easier to set up, so that's what we're going to use. And I've got a, a package called Use Super Cluster. It's actually one that I made. And it basically allows you to use Supercluster pretty easily inside of React. So we've got a component called App, and I've sort of already uh, divided up the, the, the different sections we're going to cover. We've got Map Setup, Loading and Formatting the Data, Getting the Clusters, and then actually Rendering the Map. So the last thing is any component, just returning what it should render. So right now we're rendering a div. I've already set it up to basically span the entire viewport. So we've got 100% uh, VH for height and 100% width. We, we could do VW for width, but uh, percentage works with width. And it's just saying map right now, which is obviously not what we want. So let's get started. Inside of the div, we'll be putting this Google Map React component. So just like that, and inside of here is where we'll be placing the markers that we will be rendering out. So we need to pass a number of props to the Google Map React component so that it works. First and foremost being bootstrap URL keys. Google Maps doesn't work without URL keys, so you need to go into the Google Maps API console and enable uh, maps or JavaScript maps or sort of, I forget what it's called, but whatever you would typically use with um, Google Maps. I'll post it in the, uh, the description below because I can't remember it. So I've got a key that I'm going to be passing in and the key for me is living in this .env.local file. I won't show it so that uh, I won't expose my keys. It's a security concern, but it is, um, what is it? Process.env and it is React App Google Key. So I think even if I just do this, just with the key, um, I'm not getting anything yet, so let's keep going. So the next thing to pass in is the default center. So this is where the map is going to be displayed on the screen, and we need to pass in a latitude and a longitude. So I will grab that, and I'll just basically use the first latitude and longitude from this antisocial behavior that happened. And we'll, so we'll paste that in for lat, uh, Google uses LNG, not LON, for longitude. So we'll paste in the longitude. Is the map showing yet? No. Let's keep going. So the next thing we want is the default zoom. How far should the map be zoomed in when it loads? So we'll try 10. And that's what we needed to get the map going. So you need those three pieces of information. You need the API key that um, you should be storing in a, an environment variable. You've got the center of the map, where it's positioned, and how far it's zoomed in with the default zoom. So I'd say now that we've got um, the map displaying, let's start up here at the top. So map setup. There's a few variables in state that I need to basically complete this demo. The first one that I need is a ref to the map itself. So we'll call this the map ref, very original name, and we'll use the use ref hook that I've already imported up here from, from React. And um, just like that. The next thing we need is a little bit of state that we um, are going to use when we're getting the clusters down here, but we'll just set it up now. So what we need is 
the current zoom of the map. So we'll set up zoom and set zoom to change that. And now we'll be using the use state hook. So because I know that I'm setting my map at the beginning to 10, I'll just set this one to 10 as well. And we also need the bounds of the map. So that are basically the corners. So up here, 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 the latitude and longitude. Um, so that the clustering tool sort of knows what section of the map we're using and we're displaying to the user. So this will also be used state, and for this I'll just set it up to be null at the beginning, and then we'll eventually fill that in. With those variables set up, why don't we start loading the data, and then we'll just try to get the markers showing up on a map first, and then we'll convert those markers into clusters. So I've already imported use SWR, and the way you use that is you call use to SWR, and I have a full video on this. Um, I'll link to it below if you're intro interested in a more thorough intro to this hook. But what you need to pass in is a key, and in our case, that is a URL. So I'm going to put URL there and then create a variable for it. So we'll come over here to the browser. We'll copy and paste our URL, and that is being passed in here. The next thing you need to pass into the use SWR function is what they call a fetcher. So we'll say fetcher. And what a fetcher is, it's a function. And so it's a function that will receive um, whatever you've passed into this key parameter here, this key argument. And its purpose is basically to go and fetch the data and re return with a, a promise that will eventually resolve to the actual data from that request. So we will receive sort of whatever arguments are passed in. We know it's a URL, but this way it's a little bit more generic. And it needs to return a promise. So we're going to work with the fetch library that already returns a, a promise. So we'll pass in all the same args, which will be the URL. And with fetch, you actually deal with two promises. So the first one gives you something that resolves to a response. And the response then returns a promise that resolves to JSON. It's the JSON version of that um, response. I've always sort of, sort of found it weird that it is like this, but that's what it's like. So what does use SWR return? It returns us uh, an object that we can destructure. So we're grabbing data and an error. So data will be the actual data and error is if there was an error on the request. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically look at these two variables and from this grab the crimes. Uh, so the, the way we know whether there's a crime or not is if there's data, because uh, when it's loading, data is uh, empty. I think it's undefined or null, one of those two, which is falsy either way. And there is not an error, that means we have crime data. So if those are true, we're gonna grab the data but I'm actually just going to slice out the first 200 crimes. And the reason you do clustering at all is when you're dealing with too much data, the map starts to struggle. So if we show like 1500 markers, it's going to start to slow down. So that's why we cluster them together in groups. So we can say, ah, in this little group here, there's 200 crimes or 300 crimes or whatever it is. So if there's no data or there is an error, we're just going to return an empty array so that it doesn't fail out. And now that we have these crimes, we can actually come down here and start to render out the markers. Later on, we'll convert those into clusters, but for now, let's just get something on the screen. So we're going to map the crimes, so crimes.map. And each of those will give us a crime. And what we want to return is a marker. So with this library here, we're actually going to create our own marker component. And it's going to be sort of weird. The only thing we really care about is children and rendering out the children. So it's sort of a component that really does nothing. It just, it has a name of marker and it returns its children. But uh, this library, from what I can tell, requires you to have your own sort of marker component. Because to this marker component is, is where we attach the latitude and longitude of where to display it. So now that we have our marker component set up, we can, first of all, we can attach a key because 
Anytime you map, you need to give that thing a key so React can differentiate between different markers. So each crime has an ID, so we'll use that. We'll give it the lat, so crime, I believe it's dot location dot latitude. And then LNG, crime dot, oh boy, crime dot location dot longitude. And inside our marker, we can put whatever HTML we want. So I'm going to put, um, I'll put a div. Actually, no, let's put a button. And our button will have a class of, I set something up, crime marker. Just like that. And inside the button, we will put an image. And it will point to this um, this thing I have here called custody. You'll see what it looks like in a sec. Custody.svg. We'll give it an alt so it's an it's accessible, and we'll call it uh, crime doesn't pay because it definitely does not. Um, and we'll see what it's looking like. Cool. So it's already it's already showing up, and. All those hands, if we zoom in, we can see how they're sort of where they're located. And there are little buttons here. Right now they don't do anything when, when you click, but that would be up to you to implement an on-click event. It's working okay with 200 markers, but let's see if we got that up to 2000. So we reload the page and my computer is struggling, sort of, I tried to zoom in, waiting for it to zoom, waiting for it to zoom. It, it barely, like I'm trying to drag it around, it's not working. Uh, I doubt you can hear my fan, but my computer fan's going crazy as well. So even with sort of, I think there's about 1500 markers here, it's freaking out, it can't handle it. Part of that I think has to do with using uh, Google Maps within React, but we can solve that by implementing clustering. So we're back to 200 just so that the map works without too much difficulty. So we have the crimes being shown as markers, but it's time to go up here and place them into clusters. And for that to work, we're going to use the use supercluster hook that I've imported. And what it returns us are clusters. So use supercluster. And this hook requires us to pass in a number of pieces of data. The first are points. Um, it's basically the crimes, but we've converted them into a special format that it's expecting. It's like a geo, it has an official name here in this article I wrote. It's a geojson feature object. We need to pass in some bounds that we've already set up here in a variable, but it doesn't have a value yet we need to pass uh, the current zoom level of the map. So we'll pass in zoom, which is also up here in state. And then we can pass in some options that are options that go straight to supercluster itself. So radius, how big are the zones of clustering that it should use? And the max zoom we allow our map to go to, we'll just say 20. So you can see we don't have points yet, it's giving me an error. So now it's time where we convert the crimes into the proper points format. So we'll say const points equals, and we'll map through all of the crimes. So each crime will be converted into a, a, a point. And I'm going to go back to my article and just copy the format that I need so that I don't have to memorize that and paste that in here. So the way it looks like, it's an object that has a type of feature. It's got a properties object, which is sort of any key value pairings that you want. So we will, we've got cluster false, and I'll show why that's important in a second. I'm going to pass down the crime ID, so that would be crime.id. I've got the category. I'm not really using this here, but it's just to show that you can pass in any additional information that you want. So that would be crime.category. And we have to pass in a geometry object that's a type point, and it has some coordinates. So I think the order that they're in is longitude first, and then latitude. So we need to come in here and replace this with crime.location.longitude. And 
If you look at this data, it's actually giving us the longitude as a string. We want it as a number, as a float. So we're going to come back here and we're going to parse this as a float so that we have it in the right format. So we'll parse, let me just get rid of that. So we'll parse float this as well and this will be crime.location.latitude. Cool. So what we've done is we've taken the crimes in their current format that they come in as, we've mapped them and mapping goes through each element and gives us a new array of the, the new format. So we're returning a new object for each of them that, that is this geo, GeoJSON um, feature object. So now we have an array of those and we're able to pass those into Supercluster. So now that Supercluster will give us back clusters, but I think before we move on and start showing these clusters, we need to first get the bounds and the zoom updating as the user moves the map around. And to get that to work, there's a few additional props we have to add on to our Google Map React. The first thing we need to do is add on this super insane prop called, yes, I want to use Google Map API internals. <laughs> it's crazy and I think they made it that way on purpose because I guess unless you actually need to access the, the instance of the Google Map itself, um, they don't really want that exposed. So you have to add on this insane prop. And then what we can do is we can use another prop um, called on Google API loaded. So this is a, an event that happens. And so we'll pass in a function and it gives us an object that we can extract the actual Google Map instance out of. So with this Google Map instance, we can place it up in the ref that we created up here at the beginning, map ref. So map ref dot current, and that is equal to map. So now that we have a reference to the uh, actual Google Map itself, another thing we can do is um, listen to uh, when the map changes. So on change is another event. And this event gives us access to two things. It's the current zoom of the, the map and the bounds of the map as well. So with these two pieces of information, this function will be called every time the user sort of moves the map around or they zoom in or whatnot. So we're gonna take the zoom and pla uh, pass it to our set zoom function like that. And we will take the bounds, but instead of just passing it in, we actually need to pass the bounds as an array. And I, I wrote this down on a piece of paper because I can never remember the order they go in. So bounds, we're gonna start with the northwest point and grab the longitude. Then we're gonna go to the southeast point, grab the latitude. Then we're gonna go back to the southeast point, but grab the longitude again. And then we're going to go back to the northwest and we'll grab the latitude. Um, there's documentation on both the use supercluster um, package, but also on the supercluster package itself of the order that these have to go in. If you just put them in the wrong order, it's not going to blow up. You just won't see clusters correctly. So you'll, you'll notice that it's, it's not working right. So now that we have the on change event here, every time the user moves, we're updating our state. And when the state re-renders, with the new values, it will be passed on to the use supercluster package, which will give us the new clusters. Um, however, they should appear for the user based on their zoom level and where the map's looking at. So with the clusters, what this is, is an array of points, basically, that we wanna show on the map. So clusters dot, why don't I, even before going there, why don't I console.log them out so you can see what they look like like that. Okay, so I'm gonna open up DevTools so we can see what's in the console. And what you can see here, sort of at the level we're zoomed out, there's actually only a single cluster. So if I open that up, I can see properties. This time I'm seeing cluster true. Um, I've got the ID of the cluster and how many points are in it. 
So there's 200 points because I'm still only slicing the entirety of the data. But if I were to zoom in, you can see that it re-renders and now I've got two clusters. If I zoom in again, now I've got seven clusters of data. And so the first one, you can see there's 126 points. Let me just go and open up this one. And here you can see that this one actually isn't a cluster. So maybe it's a badly named, but the clusters array contains a combination of actual clusters. So where the cluster is true and it represents multiple points within it, but it also returns individual points. So if an area on the map doesn't contain 10, there's no reason to cluster them. It actually gives you the individual point to display. So here we can use this um, property again, cluster false, to be able to differentiate between a cluster and an individual point, which in our case represents a crime. So now that we've console.logdata, I'm just going to remove that again. And let's go down and map these out. So clusters.map. So each one we'll just call a cluster, but remember that it could either be an actual cluster or it could represent a single point, a crime. And I want to extract a few variables from each of these to make it easier later on. So I want the longitude and the latitude. And this comes from clusters, sorry, not clusters, cluster.geometry.coordinates. So cluster.geometry.coordinates. And that's an array that it will destructure into two variables here, latitude or longitude and latitude. I also want to access a couple properties. Um, the first property I want is the uh, whether it's a cluster or not. So we can differentiate between the two types of data. So it's a cluster property, but we will call it is cluster. And we also had one called point count that I will just put into a variable here called point count with this type of formatting for the variable. So this is in cluster.properties. Cool. So with all these variables set up, we can now differentiate between. So we can say if it is a cluster, return one thing, one type of marker, else or sort of below here, what we actually want to show is this individual marker. So we'll say return this marker. And we need to fix this data so it's not crime.id. In this case, it would actually be cluster.properties.crimeid. And the reason this is here is because as I was mapping the crimes, I added this as a property. So we need to pass the latitude, which is just in variable called latitude, and the longitude as well. And the rest should sort of work as is. So that means I can remove this and we're only going to be mapping the clusters now. So when I load the page for the first time, you can see I'm only seeing one of them. If I zoom in, I see two. Now I see a bunch more, a bunch more. So what I'm seeing are right now only when it's not a cluster of data, but it's an individual point. So there's other clusters here we're not seeing yet, and that's because we haven't filled in what to return when it is a cluster. So when it is a cluster, we still need a marker, which has a key. So cluster.id, because each cluster, um, actually I think it's, uh, I think it, there's a cluster.id here. We'll, we'll see later. We need latitude, which is latitude. We need longitude, which is longitude. And inside our marker, we can put whatever we want. I'm going to put a div. And this div will have a class of, I believe I set it up to be called cluster marker. And in here, why don't we display the point count? sort of how many points are within each cluster. So if we come here, as we zoom in, we're, we're viewing clusters already. It doesn't look great yet. It looks like this weird egg shape that says 200. But you can see that we've got um, 192 now. We've got two clusters. If we zoom in a little bit more, we've got a few clusters plus a couple individual points. 
and they're as you zoom in, they're breaking out into smaller uh, group of of points, and it's exposing more individual crimes to us. So why don't we fix it looking like a an ugly egg? And we can do that by adding on a style property, and I'm going to be setting the width and the height, and we're going to set the width and the height based on the number of points that are in each cluster. So we'll set up backticks so we can embed a variable. So I'm going to use the point count. Actually, we'll start it off, say everyone is at least 10 pixels wide, and we'll add on the point count divided by all of the points. So points dot length. This will basically give us what percentage is this cluster of the entire um, of all the points. And we'll multiply that by 20 so that we can say it gives us 5% uh, or 0.5. I guess that would be 0 0.05, right? So it'd be 0 0.05 times 20, whatever that number turns out to, I don't know. So we set the width. Now we go and we set the height to be the same thing. And now you can see that it's a proper circle. We're setting the width and the height. And as we zoom in, it's breaking out. And the ones that have less points, because we're doing a percentage of sort of all of the points here, and we're multiplying that by 20, the ones that have less points will be smaller sizes. And we can play with this number. We can make this 40 to make it sort of more pronounced. The more points that it is, the bigger the circle. And as we zoom in, we'll get smaller and smaller points. You can play with these numbers to figure out what works best for you. Let's stick with, uh, with 30. So up until this point, we have displayed a map, we fetched some remote data, we've converted that remote data into the correct points format that will allow us to use Supercluster. And as we zoom in, it sort of breaks apart into smaller clusters and individual points. Now what we can do is come up and there's no reason to have to slice this data anymore because our map should be able to handle the 1500 points that it has. And you can see that like I zoom in, I zoom around, like the map's really responsive. I can see individual points. And we've sort of fixed the problem of the map struggling to display as many markers as we were trying to show it. The next thing I wanna do is when I click sort of one of these points, if I do a single click on it, um, I want it to zoom in to the point where it breaks that marker apart into smaller clusters. So we're going to do that by adding on an on-click event to the cluster marker. So on-click, it's a function, it's an event that gets called. And what we're going to do is Supercluster actually provides us some functionality to get the zoom level that we need to expand one cluster into many. In order to use Supercluster, we can access that from what's returned from the hook here. And we want to create a variable that we'll call expansion zoom. So this is the zoom level we need for a marker for a cluster to expand into multiple. Because it could return us a zoom that's like too far in that we want, let's say let's take the min between whatever supercluster gives us and 20. 20 is the most we ever want to zoom in. And we access it by saying supercluster dot get cluster expansion zoom. And it works by passing in the cluster ID. That's what it uses to find the cluster and figure out how what zoom it needs to expand at. So with that, we can now um, interact with the map and tell the map to zoom in. So this is us zooming in the map rather than the user explicitly doing it. So you may have uh, wondered why I set up this map ref if I hadn't even used it yet. This is the point that we use it. So we access the map ref .current, which gives us the Google Maps itself, the object. And it gives us a couple uh, methods we can call. Uh, the first is set zoom, so we can tell it to zoom in to a certain point. So let's just check if that's working. So if I click in now, 
it's zooming into the next level. Say I'm here, it's zooming in. But see, I zoomed in and now I can't even see the things I was zooming into. So maybe what we want it to do is pan to the point of the map so that whatever marker I clicked is now the center. So we can do that by calling another function called set pan, where we pass in the latitude and longitude that we want the map to pan to. So now as I click these markers, oh boy. Okay, set pan is not a function. Let's see. This is the finished product, so I've, I've done this and I've still messed it up, which is great. Pan 2. Okay. Take back everything I said. It's not set pan, it's pan 2. I've done this example like twice now and I always forget what functions and variables you, you need to make it work, so bear with me please. So with pan 2, now let's go back and say I click down here, it's going to pan to that latitude and longitude so that the marker I clicked is in the center. So every time I click it, it's zooming into the point which that one cluster will break into multiple ones. So this 114, this 55, 20. At some point it won't sort of break out and expand anymore. Um, because we've set it to be a max of, uh, of 20 that we want it to allow to zoom into. So that's it for today. Just to rehash what we covered, we have implemented Google Maps in React. So we used this Google Map React package and we did some initial setup to be able to set the keys, set the center and the zoom to make it show up. Once we had it showing up, we went and we fetched our remote data. We eventually took that remote data and converted it into the right format that's needed to basically cluster the data. So with the clusters, we could then come down and show those clusters on the map. So we looped through all each of the clusters and we differentiated between an actual uh, clustering of points by this is cluster variable here. And if it was a cluster, we showed one type of marker where the size was based on how many points are contained within that cluster. And if that's false, we come down here and we return a marker that represents an individual crime. And that was displayed as a button with some handcuffs inside of that button as the image. And with that, we were able to add an on-click event and using the actual supercluster instance, we got the uh, the level of zoom it needs to expand one cluster into multiple. And we interacted with the actual instance of the Google map to tell it to set the zoom to this new level and also pan the map to the latitude and the longitude of the cluster. And that gives us this here where we can zoom in and out and our clusters expand and break into smaller clusters as we zoom in and out. That's it for the video. I will link the actual source code. I will link the deployed version of this. And I will also link the article that I used as well when making this video that will walk you through all of the steps and describe in detail of what you need to do to make it work. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everyone. Bye.